Hi guys, in this video we're going to move on and we're going to look at something different and a bit more advanced and that's mocking external services. So often when you build web applications, you need to integrate with third party services. And examples of this could be to send emails and notifications through some kind of service or to integrate with things like message queues and caches and other APIs. And if your tests involve these external services, it's a good idea to mock them out of your application and replace them with mock objects. And this is going to make sure that your tests don't depend on things like network availability and the availability of external services. And it's going to make your test suite faster and more reliable. Now Python has this unit test.mock library and that's part of the Python standard library. And as it says here, it allows you to replace parts of your system under test with mock objects and then make assertions about how they have been used. So this package provides a core mock class. And then after performing an action, you can make assertions about which methods and attributes were used and which arguments those were called with. You can also specify things like return values as well and set needed attributes in the normal way. And it also provides this patch decorator that we're going to use in this video. And that handles patching module and class level attributes within the scope of a test. Now we're going to look at a bit of a canned example here. We're going to send a request to JSON placeholder and we can treat this as the third party API or service that we are integrating with. And we want to mock this out. And you can see this URL here, it's slash posts slash one, and it returns a single post from JSON placeholder. We're going to write a Django view for this. But before we do that, what we're gonna do is go to VS Code, and I'm gonna stop the server if it's running, and let's use the pip install command because we're going to install the requests module so that we can send those requests. Now, once requests is installed, we can clear the terminal, and we're gonna write a view here at the top of the views.py file. So let's get some space here. And to get a single post, we're going to write a function here called post, and that's gonna take the request object because it's a Django view function. We can then get a response here by calling requests.get, and we pass the URL into that for the slash posts slash one URL. And we need to import requests at the top as well, so let's just do that here. And once we have the response, we can call the raise for status method. And this is gonna return an error if any error occurred when it was fetching that data using requests.get. Otherwise, what we can do here is we can just return the JSON data that we got from the third party API and we can use the JSON response object for that. And the response data, we can convert that to a Python dictionary using the .json method. And we need to import JSON response. So let's just do that above here. And we're also going to import the HTTP response as well. So what we need to do here, because this might return or raise an exception, what we can do is wrap this in a try except block. So I'm gonna tab these over into a try block. And then we can capture any exception that's raised by requests. And we need to import that at the top as well. So let's just do that under requests. From requests.exceptions, we can import request exception. And then if we scroll back down to the function here, if you have an exception, typically you would log that error in a real application. And then you would return a response. So what we're going to do is return an HTTP response. And let's provide the content service unavailable and a status code of 503. So here we have a view that is sending a request to an external website. What we're gonna do now is go to urls.py and we can register that view here in the URL pattern. So let's paste this at the bottom and the URL is gonna be slash post. And we can now write a test for this post function here. Now we're going to mock this function here, this method, and that's the requests.get method. And that's responsible for sending the request to JSON placeholder. So first of all, why should we mock a request.get call? This is gonna help us avoid making any HTTP requests during our tests. And making HTTP requests during your tests is gonna slow down your test suite quite a lot. So that's one reason. It's also gonna introduce flakiness because your tests then become dependent on the external service and dependent on your own network connectivity. And writing tests is also gonna allow you to control the different responses you might get from the API. And it's gonna allow you to test various different conditions. For example, this service might be unavailable. You can mock that service and let's pretend that it's unavailable and then test the conditions when that's the case. Now let's get started with writing the tests. I'm gonna to go to the tests directory and it's testviews.py. And at the top of this file, let's create a new test class and it's gonna be for testing the posts. We'll call it post view test. And again, we inherit from the test case. And we also need some imports at the top. So I'm going to paste a couple of imports here. From unit test.mock, we're going to import the patch decorator, and we're going to see how to use that in a second. And we're also going to import the requests module. So within the test class, let's write a method here, and it's going to be called test post view success. In other words, when we go to this particular view here, we want to test the success conditions when we send a get request to JSON placeholder, and then we return the JSON response. 
Now what we're going to mock out is the requests.get method. So let's go back here and what we're going to do is introduce this patch decorator in Python. So before we use this, let's reference the documentation. So we've got this page open here and if we go to the patch decorator, this takes a target function that you want to actually patch. And then inside the body of the function, the target is going to be patched with a new object. And you can see new is being set to default here. But if we look at this sentence here, if new is omitted, then the target is going to be replaced with an async mock object if the patched object is an async function or a magic mock object otherwise. Now we're not using async here, it's just requests.get, that's a synchronous function. So it's going to place a magic mock object for that given function into our method when we use the patch decorator. Now I think it's easier to see this with an example, so let's go back here. And we're going to decorate this test function with the patch decorator. And we're going to pass the target in there, so it's in the products module and it's in the views.py file. So products.views and it's the requests.get function within that module. So notice here that we're not just passing requests.get, we're passing an actual reference to where this is used and that's in the views.py file. And the magic mock object that it's going to replace the request.get function with is going to be passed in here as an argument. We can call this anything we want. I'm going to call it mock get. Now what we can do with the mock get object is we can simulate a return value. I'm going to do that just now. And to the return value, we can add any number of attributes, but let's add a status code because that's expected on the response object. And let's set the status for a successful response to 200. And let's also create some data here. And I'm going to call this dictionary return data. And this is just going to mock the expected response from this endpoint. So we have a user ID, an ID, a title, and a body, as you can see here. And we can add another property to the return value. So mock get dot return value. And this time the dot JSON property, that's going to reference the JSON function that you see here in the view. So this one here. And the response.json function is going to take JSON data and convert it to Python dictionary. So we can reference that. And again, we can add a return value to that and set it to the return data that we created on the lines above. So we're setting the status code to 200 and we're setting the return value from the JSON function to the returned data here. And that's because we expect to get that back from the endpoint here. We're returning a JSON response where we take that JSON data and just basically return that as part of this Django view. So we can now test this out. So we're going to send a request to the view. So let's get a response object here and use the self.client.get method. So again, we're using the Django test client here and we're going to reverse that new post endpoint that we have. So we send a get request to that. We can then check that the response has a status code of 200 and we use self.assert equal in order to do that. And let's introduce another new method here and that's the assert JSON equal. And we're going to take the response.content and we're going to make sure that is equal to the return data that we created in this function. So basically this dictionary of data here, we want to make sure response.content is equal to that return data. And we can use assert JSON equal in order to do that. And that's another method that's added by the Django test case subclasses. And the reason this is going to work is because we are setting the return value for the .json method to what we created above here on that mock object. Now there's one last thing I want to add here and we want to ensure that the mock API call was made once with the correct URL. So there's a method on the mock get object and I'm going to paste this in here. It's the assert called once with method. And this is going to check that on this magic mock object, the URL that we pass into this, and it's the JSON placeholder URL, we're going to check that it was called once with that URL. So we're mocking out requests.get, and you can see that that is passed to that function. And we're just checking that this mock get object is called with that given URL. Now let's save this and go to the terminal. And we're going to run python manage.py test. And when we run those tests, you can see 14 tests were found and they all passed. So that is actually working and we've mocked out the call to requests.get when we have this post view in Django that uses that external API. And what I want to do is write a second function to test the failure condition. So let's do that just now. I'm going to paste the decorator here. So again, we're patching requests.get and we create a function called test post view fail and we pass that mock get object in here. And we're going to test that the post view returns a 503 on an HTTP error. Now what we can do on the mock get that's passed in, and that's the magic mock object, is we can set a side effect here. And I'm going to set one here. And let's set that to a requests.exceptions.request exception. Now when we set that side effect, it means that in the view, the accept block is going to be called. And that's going to return the HTTP response with the message service unavailable and a status code of 503. So we can test for those conditions when we get this exception 
within this method here. So again, we want to send a request to the view. So we use self.client.get and we get back a response object. And this time what we want to do is we want to assert that we have a status code of 503. So we can use assert equal to do that. And as before, we can also call that mockget.assert called once with method to make sure that in the error condition, again, we have called request.get only once with the given URL. So let's save this and go back to the terminal. I'm gonna clear this out and run the test command again, and all 15 tests are passing. Now, another situation where you might want to mock out some calls is when you send emails. You don't want your tests to rely upon some external SMTP service, for example. So that's another use case for mocking these external services. You definitely don't want your tests to be triggering emails to all of your clients. So definitely something you want to mock when you're writing these tests. And we'll look at a small example of that in the next video. But this has just been a quick introduction to mocking external services, such as calls to external APIs. And you can see the method to do that is you patch the given method. So we use the patch decorator here and we pass the target into that. And then within the arguments to the function that we've decorated, we can get that mock object and we can set things like side effects. We can check that it's called with given arguments. And if we go up here, we can also set return values. So that's extremely useful. In the next video, we're gonna move on and we're going to look at testing signals in Django. And we're also gonna build upon the concepts we've learned here on mocking external services. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in that video.